it tastes like the urinary excretion of grass. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about an update on my eating disorder. I am going to film an updated my eating disorder story at some point because I know I filmed one before on my channel. I can't remember if it's still up. It was one of the first videos on my channel but um, I think I'd be in a better place to reflect back and obviously a lot's happened in the last few years so I'd like to, uh, I, I would like to do that. First of all I'm going to say that in this video there will be no numbers so I'm hoping that it's as trigger free as possible but obviously everyone's triggered by different things so if you're feeling that watching this video isn't for the best for you then feel free to turn it off. I'm going to start by talking about how my eating disorder was, has been the last few years before I was pregnant and then throughout my pregnancy and then now as a mum um, after giving birth to Edie. Edie is you. Um, since being in a relationship with Sam, I found it better able to manage my eating disorder. For the first year, I found it better able to manage my eating disorder, the thoughts and stuff, because when you're trying to be in a relationship and have experiences with someone, you can have the thoughts and stuff, but if you're giving into the thoughts, you're not really going to have much energy left for having those experiences. So I was trying to manage it better. As you may or may not know, I've talked about it a little bit on my channel, I think it might have been on the other channel actually, uh, my parenting and baby channel. Um, I had a miscarriage three months into our relationship um, and because of that I came off of a medication that I was on and because of the miscarriage and my hormones going all over the place and coming off the medication I gained weight. Um, it wasn't kind of a conscious thing, it wasn't something that I tried to do, I just I gained weight and that's what was happening to my body. Um, one thing that I will talk to you briefly about, I think I've mentioned, I think I've made a video about it, about my idea of recovery. Recovery is not something that I have ever felt able to relate to because for me I've always felt like putting a name on what I'm doing and everything it just makes it too hard or it's I don't feel like I'm ever going to be free of my eating disorder so I don't know it's just I think I've made another video on this so go and look back on my channel if I have I'll link it down below if not I'll try and make a video on it at some point. So I just filmed this video and I've just had it out and I was just thinking and I think I need to explain a bit more about my ambivalence towards the word recovery. Um, now recovery in terms of an eating disorder wasn't something that I'd heard of until I joined Instagram and I became a part of the eating disorder community years ago uh, just when the kind of um, the ED soldiers movement was starting. Yeah, it wasn't something I'd ever heard of and I hated the way that it was portrayed. It was either, it's so black and white, like you were either pro Anna or you were in recovery and I don't know, I hated it and ever since then I've just, I don't like the word recovery, I don't like what it, obviously I like what it means if people are choosing to try and overcome their eating disorder, but for me my eating disorder is something that I've um, I don't have any control over in terms of the fact that it's in my brain so to say just I feel a bit weird about just switching and going oh I'm not gonna have an eating disorder anymore. I know it's not like that but that's how it always felt to me and that's how I felt it was portrayed I've always gone through phases of I'm either eating or I'm not eating um, and when I say I'm not eating I am not eating um, as many of you know my peripheral neuropathy started because of a period of like not eating it was the longest time I've gone without food and I became very very unwell and that's kind of what I mean like I mean throughout the whole of my 18 years of an eating disorder until my relationship with Sam I was either eating or not eating and um, I'd go through maybe a few months of building up my intake to still a very low calorie intake um, and then I wouldn't eat anything for a certain amount of time um, and that's how it's always been for me which is why my metabolism is fucked uh, yeah when I uh, started my relationship with Sam I kind of kept it more stable um, but at a lower level if that makes sense so I feel like I didn't explain myself very well so I just wanted to cut in whilst I was remembering these things and thinking you yeah, know you know what I can talk about this I've got something good to say here so I want to say it um, hopefully something good to say so sorry for kind of jumping away look at Edie there she looks so cute um, so sorry for jumping around um, yeah back to me filming but recovery I've never actively been in recovery because that's like as as people talk about because it's not something that I can relate to towards the end of the first year I started to my anxiety got really really bad I lost my appetite basically I wasn't I wasn't eating very much maybe just like one meal a day I just didn't have the appetite if I wanted to eat something I did but I just didn't want to eat not eating disorder fuel just I didn't have the appetite that carried on until I fell pregnant although I'd say that 
it was more eating disorder fueled just before I was pregnant. Not that actually I was doing a lot of exercise, which was partly eating disorder fueled and body image fueled, but also partly uh, wanting to be strong. Because of the pain that I'm in, I can suffer lots of muscle loss and stuff. So I have to work really hard to not lose any strength. Yeah, baby. And then I fell pregnant. Um, and at the time when I fell pregnant, I was doing a lot of exercise and I was probably only eating one meal a day. Um, and because I wanted to fuel my baby and I had to fuel my body because I was pregnant, I then started eating three meals a day. I wasn't eating a massive amount because I had horrific morning sickness. It wasn't just morning, it was all through the day sickness. I threw up every day um, throughout most of my pregnancy and I just felt really, really poorly. But I just, you know, I ate as and when I could, trying not to give in to my eating disorder. I'm not trying, I didn't because you don't when you're pregnant. I didn't anyway. So basically going into my pregnancy, I was essentially refeeding my body. And if you've ever uh, starved yourself for a period of time and then started eating again, you'll know that refeeding, I'm not talking about refeeding syndrome because that's a medical thing that's very different, but just refeeding as in the process of refeeding your body is brutal. And you can put on a lot of weight. Uh, you can have some pretty shitty side effects. For me, I put on weight very, very, very easily um, because of the extremes I've gone through in the past, it's fucked up my metabolism basically. So I put on a lot of weight in my pregnancy, a lot of weight, which was hard. I mean, I was weighed at the beginning of my pregnancy because you have to be. Um, and then every time when they asked me to be weighed after that, I just said, is it absolutely necessary? And they said, no. So I said, if it's necessary, I'll be weighed. If it's not, then I won't. And then I was weighed at the end of my pregnancy. Um, I gained a lot of weight. That's all I'll say. So that's kind of how it was in my pregnancy. It wasn't really an issue. It it was a lot easier when I started to show because obviously when you're gaining weight and gaining a stomach but you don't look obviously pregnant, it can fuck with your head a little bit. But when I had an obvious bump, which was from about sort of four or five months, it was a lot easier. Post-pregnancy, I have a lot to talk about on this. First of all, I've always planned on breastfeeding. Um, I wanted to breastfeed as much as I could, as long as I could, as long as it worked and everything, and as long as it was what was right for me and Edie. And it has been, it's been perfect for both of us. I've had no pain, we've had both had an amazing experience, we're having an amazing experience. There is a misconception around breastfeeding that um, you lose weight, it helps you lose weight, which I'll admit was something I was looking forward to. However, that is not the case for every person. It's just everybody is different as with everything. Every human being and everybody reacts differently. Most amount of people, breastfeeding won't help you lose weight. You know, when you think about it scientifically, it doesn't make sense for your body to be burning fat when you are trying to provide for another human being. Breastfeeding hasn't helped me lose any weight, which has fucked with my head a little bit. Uh, because I am breastfeeding, I'm trying to eat as well as I can. I know I was not eating as much as I should because I physically and mentally, I'm, you know, I'm doing what I can. Edie is thriving, so whatever I'm doing must be working for her. Yeah? You love your milkies, don't you? You love your milkers. The other thing I was going to mention is uh, when I told everyone else, when I told everyone I was pregnant, a uh, lot like on my YouTube channel when I announced it, I had a lot of comments from people saying, either kind of really arsey saying, I thought you were anorexic, and how can you be anorexic if you're pregnant? Obviously, I had other comments than this. But these were the ones that upset me. People congratulating me for overcoming my eating disorder to become pregnant. If I'd have overcome my eating disorder, I would have been talking about the fact that I was recovered and I'd overcome it. I've never said that. I've always talked about how I'm struggling and some there are good times and bad times and the complications that I've had. There was just a massive assumption that because I was pregnant, I couldn't have an eating disorder, which is very wrong because eating disorders can happen to anyone at any weight. Uh, it's not a weight specific thing. Obviously one of the more common symptoms of an eating disorder is to lose weight, but you can have an eating disorder at any weight. As most people watching this channel probably know. Because the problem is, like when you have an eating disorder, when you're very starved, you're, you have an eating disorder in your brain, right? This is how I look at it. If you gain weight, your brain, you may be cognitively be able to think a little bit clearer, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your brain has changed because just because your body has a bit more fat. It doesn't really change much. Um, it can for some people. It's all about mentally what's going on. And if you've had an eating disorder as long as I have, it can be very difficult to actually overcome it completely. So after, obviously I had a C-section, so I was recovering from that and you can have eating disorder related thoughts, but if there's other stuff going on in your life, then <laughs> sometimes you can't, it just takes a backseat. Um, I started at the gym when I was about two months postpartum, so when Edie was about two months old. How do I, I'm struggling. 
I'm struggling. Um, my stomach went down very quickly, but it's the number on the scales which is bothering me. I weighed myself again two weeks ago, and I've only lost a tiny bit of weight from when I, ver from when I first weighed myself after giving birth to Edie. I obviously lost like 10 kilograms straight away because of the weight of her and the weight of um, the water and placenta and everything. But there's still a lot of weight there that I shouldn't be there. Oh, it's really hard to talk about. Yeah, I'm struggling uh, with my thoughts, not with what I'm doing because I'm trying to nourish myself for Edie because I am feeding her. Um, I, f I was ill recently and I couldn't go to the gym for two weeks. The first week because I was ill, the second week because Edie was ill. Um, and I really, really struggled. Like, I didn't realise what an effect it had on me, kind of, my mentality. Um, I've started feeling, so I started feeling really kind of woolly and fuzzy, which I know is, m like, m my mentality and kind of feeling like I'm gaining fat around my body when just missing the gym for two weeks isn't going to do anything. The one thing that I'm really struggling with is I'm trying, the last thing I want is for Edie to have any of the problems that I've had. I am trying to create a positive environment for her. Um, in, in lots of ways, but I'm talking right now about like the kind of the self-image and self-confidence and self-esteem type things. Um, and I know she doesn't understand words at the moment, but I don't want her growing up in, in a home which um, fat is kind of a negative thing and where food is something that has to, is to be feared or... <laughs> no, I agree. I want kind of her to have a really good self-image um, and it's really hard creating an environment that is healthy like that for your child when you are hating yourself and you are feeling grotesque and disgusting. It's really hard um, and there's been quite a few times in the last few weeks when I've like been freaking out about the way I look and just been like, Edie's just been like lying there amusing herself and I'm just like well, what am I doing? I can't be doing this and I just kind of have to push it away but Sadly, mental illness doesn't work like that uh, all the time. You know, I can do it like short term, but long term that it doesn't fix anything. So at the moment, I'm just trying to kind of, I'm trying to muddle along and I know that I will lose the baby weight eventually. Um, for my mentality, I hope that that is true. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, if I don't lose a single pound, I'll deal with it because this little one is the most important thing that has ever happened to me and I am the luckiest person in the world to have her in my life. Yeah. Mwah. All I can try and do is try to be do the best that I can, be the best that I can to be kind of a positive role model on her because as I said, I don't want her to have to go through anything that I've been through. She means the world to me and she deserves so much better than any of the rubbish that I've been through. Um and she deserves better than to have a mummy who's crying mm. over the way she looks. Um and I'm working really hard to try and give her that yeah i love you bouncy baby Edie. shouldn't do that without a bra on should i yeah 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 i feel like there's so much more i have to say once again i am jumping in with something else to say something i forgot to mention my dog i'm sorry something that i forgot to mention in this video is a oh, what well, is a strategy that I've been using to cope with my eating disorder thoughts. Something quite important you'd think that I would have talked about in the video, but it's, it's not something that I think about uh, massively often because it's just become an automatic thing. Um, I talked with my therapist about it. If you didn't know, I see a private therapist every sort of six weeks. It's not to do with my eating disorder. He's someone I've known since I was 16 who is um, a nurse at my uh, the first inpatient unit I was in and I've been seeing him on and off since then and he's he's an amazing guy he's um yeah he's he's been a massive help to me with various things over the years I told him that this is what I was doing and he said that it's not uncommon and he's spoken to a few people that have a long history of eating disorders that are doing this and what I do basically is it sounds really silly but I try and use the eating disorder to my advantage yeah, it. I don't know how best to describe it. It's like, if the eating disorder is there, it's like obviously a negative thing. It's in my brain. It's, you know, telling me negative things. And I'm trying to turn it around and use the things that it's telling me 
and use the um, things that it's telling me to do in a positive way. So, for example, I try and use um, I try and use a little bit of it to help me at the gym. Now, um, I need to go to the gym to help keep on top of my joints, my muscle problems, and to try and stay as strong as possible. I could be going to do like lots of cardio and all of that. I'm trying to stay away from that. I'm trying to do it for strength um, and muscle, all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and so if I were to give in completely to my eating disorder, then I'd just be kind of furiously doing cardio. That's not what I'm doing. So I'm trying to use it a little, a little bit and use it to fuel my workout, if that makes sense. Um, and it's the same with, in terms of um, trying to drink more. I often forget to drink and I also get paranoid about drinking. I've gone for long, long periods of time in the past where I didn't drink any water, I would have just green tea, which is just rancid. I'm, I'm now can see, I've seen the light with green tea. There's no way of making it taste good. I've tried to do things in the past it just tastes like piss. It tastes like it tastes like the urinary excretion of grass. It's rank. If you like it, fair play. I don't. I find drinking water difficult sometimes. Um, and because I'm breastfeeding as well, I have to make sure I keep really, really hydrated. And if I don't drink at least two litres a day, I really, really feel it, which is difficult for me sometimes. So again, I try and use my eating disorder to fuel, to keep reminding me to drink water, to use it as a kind of... Yeah, I just use my eating disorder to fuel me keeping hydrated. And the same with eating. Um, whilst if I gave into my eating disorder, I wouldn't be eating anything. So I'm trying to use my eating disorder to make me be able to eat healthy meals. Um, just to be able to fuel my body in the best way I can. Is it the best way of doing things? I don't know. It's working for me. Um, and I think, you know... As my, I thought maybe it was just a really, I thought it was just like a silly idea, but as you know, as I said, my therapist said that a lot of people do that, and I think if you have an eating disorder and it's something that is chronic, and you've had it for many many years, why not try using it, kind of for positive? Which sounds so fucking crazy. It's a bit like saying it's a, a bit like if you're an alcoholic and using that for, you know, for good. It doesn't really make sense. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I just snag your socks? I'm sorry. Um, it doesn't really make any sense, but yet it's making sense for me in my head and it's working for me to an extent. So why not? Everyone has their own different way of doing things. And I just thought I'd mention it because if this feels like something... If living without the eating disorder is something that you don't think is possible for you or is too hard to think about, why not try it? Because... It could work for you. I don't know. Uh, Edie just wants to say hello quickly. She's wearing the sweetest little outfit today. Say hi, Edie. You're wearing your cherry romper. Your cherry romper. So I'm going to go back to past Charlotte now and carry on editing this video. Hopefully I'll have it up soon. Mwah. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Comment if you want to. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.